Greetings and welcome to another screencast from Dev Bootstrap. Today we're going to cover the open closed principle. Well, what is open closed principle? Well, it's part of Solid. This is a series in Solid, the Solid principles. Uh, the last episode we covered the single responsibility principle, and today we're going to cover the open closed principle. And we'll cover the remaining principles in uh, the rest of the screencasts. So what is the open-closed principle? Well, basically, the open-closed principle states that a class should be open for extensibility and closed for modifications. And what this means is that as soon as your class is in the wild, as in in production, and being used by other clients or consumers, then you should not change its behavior. You should not be able to open the class up and change how it works. Now there is one exception and that is when there is a bug but otherwise you should stick to this rule. Why should you stick to this rule? Well if you break this principle then the functionality that you have changed and you then subsequently deploy into production because it's being used by third client third party client applications it's going to have a profound effect on the system and the users of that system. In other words it's just going to break, probably. Who knows? But the point is, is there's the uncertainty and there is the difficulty to manage and maintain and keep your clients updated on what you're doing. So the idea is to stick to this rule and not to change the inner workings of your class. And a, a classic example, I think, for these days is APIs, API endpoints. Once an API endpoint is deployed, and being consumed, you should not change it. And that's why we have versioning in APIs, right? So don't change the behavior of your class. Keep it closed. So how do you then therefore change your application? Because obviously, yes, you can fix bugs, but how do you modify the behavior of your application? How do you add new features? add new integrations, and, and, and all of these kind of stuff. And, and, and the answer, of course, is that it's, um, it's, you can extend your, uh, your class. You can extend it. And, and in this example that I'm going to go through today, I'm going to show you how you would extend uh, some of the classes that we went through in the previous episode, uh, how we can extend them using inheritance to add new behavior. So, as mentioned in, uh, before, everything is inside this repository here. It's all of the solid principles covered in, in one mono repo. And you follow it by going from start to conclusion through all the solid principles. And the last screencast, we went through the single responsibility pattern. And today we're going to go through the uh, open closed principle. And if you click on any of these, it will open up uh, another readme file specifically for that principle. So let's head over to our code editor here and, and, and take a look at what we're going to be doing in this example. And the example is related to the store logger class. So as you recall, we have this store logger class and currently it's just logging to the console. And we're like, let's change it. Let's change it so it logs to something more useful, like, for example, Splunk. Splunk, by the way, is a real application. It's a data feed application, right? It brings data into a central place, and you can do reporting on it. So let's say, for example, you know, we're like, OK, the app's in, in the wild, but we're not really getting much visibility. Let's use Splunk. So how can we do this if we can't change the store logger class? Well, let's take a look at the store logger class. Here it is. The store logger class, as I mentioned, this is it unchanged from the previous video, right? This is the original store logger class. Currently only logs to the console. And we want to now log to Splunk. Now I certainly can't go in and change this to some Splunk logging, right? I can't do that because I am breaking the open closed principle, right? I'm breaking that principle by making changes directly into this class. So the answer is, as I mentioned before, is to extend the class into something new. So this is where the new class, the store logger Splunk uh, 
class comes in. And we are extending the store logger class to create this new class. And what I've done is I've basically used the interface of the store logger to wrap methods to a different logger, the Splunk logger. So the interface is exactly the same. The API of this class is the same as the store logger class. So that means that if you were to hand this to somebody or to use this in your application, the application would still work because the interfaces are the same. That's, the, that's one important fact. And how we get access to the Splunk logger is through an internal private method right here where we return an instance of the Splunk logger. Now, of course, you notice here I'm cheating. I'm just passing uh, a, or I'm actually just calling uh, console log, actually, uh, again. But what I'm doing is to, to give me some indication that it's changed is I'm prefixing every log with logged to Splunk in my application here. So um, this just allows me to test this. But you can imagine here might be some implementation or an instance of the Splunk logger that would actually log to Splunk if we were doing this in a real application. So this is how we extend the logger class. But if you recall, we have a orchestration class, the class that basically is the glue for everything in this application, which is the message store class. Let's take a look at that. If you recall, and if you need a refresher, go back to the previous video where we covered this. But this class is our orchestration class, which manages all of the different classes. So this, the logger, the file store, and the store cache. And what we want to do is we want to now use our, our, our Splunk logger, right? But again, we're faced with the same issue. If we're following the open-close principle, we cannot modify this class. We can't just swap out the store logger here for the Splunk logger, right? We can't just change that to the store um, logger Splunk. All right. Um, whoops. <laughs> we can't just do this, right? We can't just change it to this. Because if we do that, we have just broken the open close principle. We've just changed the behavior of this class, right? Um, you might say, well, it's nothing, it's just a logger, but we, we, you know, it's changing the behavior of the class and that we don't know if other clients are relying on the fact that the logger is logging to console or logging to wherever this logger logs, right? So we need to keep it in place. So I've made one very, very, very subtle change. You'll notice that I'm still uh, it's creating an instance of the logger and setting it to a local variable here, uh, logger. But when I pass the logger to the file store and the cache, I am actually calling the getter method. This is actually a new method I've added. It's a getter. And the getter just returns the logger. So actually, even though I have changed the code, I've added a getter, I've not changed the functionality of this class at all. But what I've done is I have enabled this class to be extensible by being able to extend the message store to something custom. And then I'm able to override the logger, override the getter for the logger. So let's take a look at how we did that over here. In the custom message store, I extend the message store class, and all I do is I override the logger, right? I only override the getter for the logger, and this is where I pass in the store logger Splunk. So I return the store logger Splunk, and this now gives me a brand new custom message store with all the behavior of the original method message store, but with the new logger. OK, so let's test this. The test examples are much shorter in this case. We're just testing the new custom message store. And we can run it by this command here, ts node uh, source forward slash test examples. We run this, and you can see that it is logging to Splunk. OK, so if this is really using Splunk, it would be logging to Splunk. And let's just try something out here. Let's comment out the logger. 
Okay, so I'm just going to remove the logger. I'm commenting it out, but I'm so so so. But we're still going to test using the custom message store. And if we go back over here, I'm not changing this, but I'm going to run the test again, and you'll see that the output now no longer logs to Splunk. Okay, so it's as simple as that. And this is the ability. This is by 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 adding this custom getter to our message store and extending it in this way, we're able to very easily swap out the logger for something new. And now we can tell all of our clients, hey, if you want to use our shiny new message store implementation, then you can by just simply using this class instead of the old message store class, and you're gonna get this new logger. You're gonna get this new Splunk logger. And everything else is unchanged. So this is how we can follow uh, this principle in this example application. And that wraps up this screencast for today. And I hope you liked it. If you like it, please hit the like bu button, hit, hit the subscribe button. And I'll be back for more videos uh, very soon where we continue our journey through solid design principles. Until then, take care and good day.